In this video, we're going to take a look at a new material that is available in Octane 4 for Maya, and that is the universal material. And for this video, I'm using the robot02.mac. So let's open up Hypershade. Now, I already have a universal material applied to all the surfaces on our little robot bartender here. So here it is, the universal material. You can find this material under Octane Materials down here at the bottom. And what the universal material does is it combines the abilities of the diffuse, glossy, metallic, and specular material into one surface. Now, if you're unfamiliar with octane materials, I recommend that you watch the other videos in this series on those materials so that you have a better understanding of how they work. This video is just going to cover some of the unique aspects of the octane universal material. So let's take a look at the attribute editor. And up at the top here, we have transmission. This attribute allows you to turn our universal material into an octane specular material. Let's move the outliner off to the side here so we can see our surface a little bit better. And I'm going to click on the checker box next to transmission here and add an RGB spectrum texture. And let's set this to a light blue color. And you can see the surface becomes kind of this weird translucent, light blue, white color. And that is because our albedo, or our base color, or also known as diffuse, uh, is set to white. So this is determining how light is hitting the surface and then diffusing back into the environment, whereas the transmission is controlling how the light goes through the surface. So these two attributes are fighting against each other. If we want to have something that looks like that light blue uh, transmission that we have plugged in here, we're going to have to set our albedo down to zero. And now we get something that looks like a light blue specular material. So we can go down here and say increase the roughness if we want to make like a frosted glass kind of look. Or we can even go down here and add a medium, just like we would with this specular material if you want to create things like subsurface scattering effects. So you can check out the videos on mediums and the specular material for more information on how that works. But now it's all available within the universal material. Let's break the connection here for transmission so that it goes back to an opaque surface. We can bring the albedo back up. Let's add some textures to the robot and take a look at how you can combine metallic and non-metallic surfaces in the single universal material. So I'm going to go down to the octane textures and under image, I'm going to add an octane image tiles texture. So there's a video on this uh, new type of texture that is available. You can check it out for more information on how it works. But I'm just going to quickly hook it up to the albedo here. So I'll set the texture output to albedo. Click on the octane tiles texture and let's add our tiles. So this particular model requires three tiles because the way the UVs are set up. So I'm going to choose base color 1001, base color 1002, base color 1003. And these textures are in the barbot underscore udim folder and source images for this project. <clears throat> let's set the grid size to three by one. Hit the reload button. We can see now we have our albedo um, textures available. Now the way I set up this this robot, uh, these parts of the surface, these ones that appear white right now, are going to be metallic, and these black parts are going to be kind of a glossy plastic. So right now it's not looking very metallic. So the next thing we need to do is uh, add our metallic textures. So again, let's do Octane Image Tiles Texture. Of course, you can use other types of image textures with this material. I'm just using image tiles because of the way this robot is set up with this UVs and the textures. Let's add our tiles here. This is going to be metallic 1001, metallic 1002, and metallic 1003. Set the grid size to three by one. Set the uh, color type as grayscale, and then let's connect the texture output to metallic. And hit reload. There we go. So now we have our nice kind of chrome looking robot. We have chrome right here, 
and then glossy plastic right here. So you can kind of think of this part as being a glossy material, this as being a metallic material. So if we go into our universal material, how do we control the various attributes for glossy versus metallic? So we can first set our BSDF model, and GGX is usually the most popular choice, so let's leave it at that. Um, if I change the specular, you'll notice that the specular is only changing on those glossy parts of the surface. If I increase the roughness, it is kind of an overall roughness, so it's changing the overall roughness for the surface. And then we also have an anisotropy, so we can see the highlight here want to create anisotropic effects. So the dielectric index of refraction controls the index of refraction on these glossy parts here. So if I start to increase this, you can see this part isn't changing, but this is becoming much shinier. If I bring it all the way down, we get kind of a matte surface. So we can have an index of refraction for these parts of the surface, and then for the index of refraction for the metallic parts, we can go down here to the metallic reflection mode. And this is just like the metallic material. So check out the metallic material video for more information on how these controls work. So I'm going to set the metallic reflection mode to IOR plus color. And now I can control the index of refraction here on just the metallic parts of the surface. And then I can control the index of reflection on these glossy parts separately. And of course, you can also uh, input textures. So I can input a texture for the dielectric uh, index of refraction map right here. So that would be a grayscale texture. And then if I want to get um, especially fancy, I can switch the uh, metallic reflection mode to RGB index of refraction, and then actually put in different values for the different color channels. So red, green, and blue, red, green, blue, and I'm just kind of putting in random numbers, but if you want to learn more about how these work, check out the metallic material video. And then we have coding, so I can increase the coding here. Just to make this a bit more obvious, let's set this to like bright red, which is, you can see that now we have kind of a coding here on the edges of the surface, and then we also have a coding roughness option. And of course, you could also use a texture here for the coding. Let's set this back to black. And we can use a texture for the coding roughness and also uh, a separate index of refraction for the coding. So if I bring this up again, let's set this back to, well, actually, let's set this to the light blue. And increase the index of refraction for the coding and the roughness. So you can start to really get different types of metallic quality, but you notice it's affecting both the metal and non-metal parts of the surface. So it's an overall coating. So bring this down to black. We can take a look at the film. So the film is very similar to what you'd find in the uh, specular, the specular material. So this is great for kind of creating kind of oily effects like on water and that kind of thing. But let's set this down to zero and then take a look at sheen. So I'm gonna put a green color into the sheen here. So sheen is a bit similar to coating. We have a sheen roughness here. This is really good for creating kind of dusty effects or dirty effects. So you can see how it kind of dulls parts of the surface that are facing away from the camera. And of course we have sheen roughness here. And then finally, we have dispersion coefficient, which works the same way as it does in the specular material. And then just like the specular material, we have fake shadows affect alpha. And like all the materials, we have bump, normal, and displacement, edge rounding, and we can even add uh, an emissive uh, texture. So let's click on this. Well, actually, what we'll do is let's disconnect the metallic and let's get rid of that green sheen, which is kind of weird. And then let's click next to emission and we can create a uh, octane texture emission. Of course, we get a nice, bright, shiny robot, literally. 
And let's plug the metallic into the efficiency or texture. And you can see that now, just the parts that were metallic before are now glowing brightly. So you can use a texture to control which parts of the surface are glowing if you want to do that. So that's the basics of working with the uh, universal material. Again, it saves a lot of uh, work when you're setting up materials for complex surfaces. Whoops, let's plug this back into metallic. And combined with the image tiles textures, it makes your networks much easier to manage. And of course you can use a universal material uh, with a mixed material so you could even combine multiple universal materials with a mixed material um, to create uh, extremely complex uh, materials, but without as many nodes to worry about in the hypershade.